How's it going, everybody? This is Pastor Chris coming to you with Just a Thought. Just a Thought is your weekly devotional where we go over things that have popped into my mind during the week. And we, we talk about them a little bit to share uh, spiritual insight, to try to reconnect with God uh, midweek, and just go over what I think um, are interesting thoughts and uh, quandaries that we might have. So today I have an interesting one for you that was raised by a question that I got, which the question was, why is it that in the Bible there are all sorts of miracles and these uh, huge events that seem almost magical when we read them today, and you just don't see things like that uh, in the culture around us? What happened to the miracles? Sometimes if you open up the Bible and you read about some of the things that Jesus did, and especially if you go to the Old Testament and read about those things, it can start to sound a little bit more like science fiction than real life. Which begs the question, is it real life that these kind of things happen? But there's an additional question that comes on top of that, which really goes to ask, what is it that you're looking for? If you're looking around for miracles in your day-to-day -day life, why is it that you want to see them exactly? Are you looking for proof? Proof that God is real. Proof that you're supposed to do this thing. Proof that will give you the um, purpose in seeking after a particular goal. Because if it's proof that you're looking for, then that probably goes a long way on why you're not seeing these so-called miracles. These evidence and small little snippets of being shown that God is with you in this world. If your purpose is proof, then you're having the exact same reaction that they had back in biblical times when they did witness these things. There are several stories in the Bible where people demand that Jesus will show a sign, that people will scream out for Jesus to heal someone or to do something or, um, or basically do parlor tricks so that Jesus can prove to them his purpose and the sincerity of his mission. The problem with asking for proof on these kind of things is over and over again, you're going to need another sign. Uh, give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a glass of milk. And if that's your purpose behind miracles, then it explains why you're not seeing them. Because we envision our head miracles to be life-changing events. If I witnessed a miracle, then I would know that it was true, and that this would be the thing, and that God is telling me to do this or that or the other. But if that's what you are waiting for then doubt will creep into your mind directly after you see it. Well, how did he do that? Well, maybe it was just a circumstance. I'm going to need to see something else, and then I'm going to need to see something else, and then I'm going to need to see something after that. Science is a completely different thing today than it was back in biblical times when these books and these stories were first shared and written. So if you're looking for a miracle to prove that God is real, then what you're going to have is a constant back and forth where you demand signs from God. And we don't get very far with that kind of information. But if what you're looking for is the presence of God in your life, I'm looking to know that God is with me. I'm looking to feel that relationship building me up. I'm looking to know that I'm not alone in this world. I'm looking for the love of God. Well, then it's hard to go a day, an hour, without witnessing miracles that are happening around you because your eyes are open to the possibility not that you need proof that God is doing something in your life but you're looking for God's presence and love and nurturing and care which is always all around us so you begin to see these miracles each and every day in your life as they pop up if you struggle with this, 
if you struggle with constantly looking up into the heavens and saying, God, just show me a sign, then I want to read a passage of scripture for you that I think might help today. This comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit, and all the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all of his glorious power, so that you will have all the endurance and the patience that you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Do you want to belong to the kingdom of God? Are you looking for that sign? Well, here's a miracle for you. God loves you. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, and he will continue to love you along the path of your choosing. But wouldn't it be miraculous if you went down the path that God called you to today? Peace be with you. I hope you're well. Call me if you're not. Peace.